tragic death of Philip Bassini would no doubt be accepted as an accident, almost certainly by the coroner and without any doubt by the Forsyth family. Yet to my mind, and I know the same thought was in my father's, Bassini's death was no accident. The Forsyths had surely killed him. And why not, they might well ask. The poor buccaneer had threatened their most valuable possessions, their money and the sanctity of the heart. Retribution, they call it, upon Bassini, upon Irene, who had dared to fall in love, even upon June, for bringing him into the family circle. Who's going to tell her? June? Yes. I can't bear the thought of it. He was everything to her. I think Helene, my father. What? Yes, just after you left Stanhope Gate, the inspector appeared on the doorstep. He told us both the news. I was going to fetch you at once, but we went inside first for a moment. June was upstairs dressing. Elaine thought that if she came down before we got back, well, the news might come more easily from another woman. Might. Might. I'd be grateful if she has. Hello. Isn't Grandpapa down yet? And where's my... my father? Has he left you by yourself? I'm so sorry. John, will you come and sit down? Why? I have to tell you something. Something tragic and dreadful. You must please prepare yourself for a great shock. What is it? What's happened? Is it... Grandpapa? Phil? Is it to do with Phil? He... Are you trying to tell me he's gone? Gone away with... Oh, him? no, June. He... Oh, what then? He had an accident. An accident? Oh, where is he? I must go to him at once. Oh, June, dear. Oh, quick, tell me, where is he? He's dead. No. He was run over in the fog last night and was killed. No. No, it's not true. It can't be true. It can't... Joe, I don't think you can be much help to June, but... What? I'm thinking of that poor girl, Irene. If she hasn't heard already, Soames will tell her. If I'm mistaken, he won't be too squeamish about it. Someone ought to go there. Oh, and tell her, tell her if you see her, that I'll do anything I can. London architect killed in fog. All the news, all the news, all the latest. Horrible accident. London architect killed in fog. Paper, yes. sir. Horrible accident, London architect in, killed in fog. Look, here's oh. half a crown. Go somewhere else. Well, Governor, this is me beat. Two half crowns, now go. Come back. Are you sitting here in the dark? I suppose you... I suppose you've seen this. You know he's dead. That's why you've come back. Nowhere else to go, have you? No. Stay. Where else should you be but here? He was your lover, wasn't he? Now, don't deny it. I know now. I know for certain. I don't deny anything. Why? I don't understand why. I, I'm a human being. I'm a man. I, I, I love you. You think you know what that word means? Yes. You really think you I know? I think so. Have I been good to you? Tried to be? You had everything you want? Except one thing. Oh, one thing! This freedom you talk about, I suppose. But we can't all be free to do exactly as we like. 
And if we were, what sort of world do you think we'd live in? Whether there'd be no, no order, no rules, no, no settled society. The morals of the hen run. Anarchy, is that what you want? Is that the way you think we should behave, like animals? Is that your idea of marriage, that you should give yourself to any man that takes your fancy? Do you want to live like a whore? Oh, stay, you'll hear me out. Very well, since it's for the last time. But if I were what you called me, you'd have no cause for complaint, because you've tried to buy me with your money and your position and with your love. Yes, and yes, you have loved me, and I believe you still do in your way, but none of it, nothing you can offer is as much to me as one touch of his hand. But that's the freedom I ask for, Soames, the freedom to love once, just once and forever. But you denied me that because love to you is greed and the lust for possession, for ownership. I was speaking of marriage. Yes, I and know. And marriage is a contract freely entered into with rights and obligations on both sides. Our marriage is over. No! <sighs> Irene. Oh, couldn't we begin again? Oh, I, I've been harsh with you, I know, I'm sorry. But I've suffered too, you know. Mm. Yes. Damnably. But we can get over this in time. Now, I'll make no demands on you. <laughs> no, no, I mean that. I, we can make a life together. If, if we both try. Uh, if, if there's anything you want. Just one thing. What is it? Your permission to stay here tonight. As you so delicately said, I've nowhere else to go. And tomorrow I'll be gone from this house. You won't have to suffer any more because of me. You're still my wife. I'm not! I'm not your anything! I don't understand! No, you don't, and you never will! But I'll, I'll say it once more. I am not your property. You don't own me and no one else ever will. Is that clear? From now on, I own myself. Yes. Here, yeah, Cappy. Uh, wait for me, please. Well, sir, what do you want? Oh, it's you. The door was open, sir. Well? Might I speak with your wife for a moment? Well, my wife can see no one. Uh, I shall only keep her a moment. I said my wife can see no one. This is my house. I manage my own affairs. I've told you before and I tell you again, we are not at home! Well, I don't know. That you, Parfit? Shan't want anything more. You can go to bed. I'll lock up. It's Joe, Father. Ah, there you are. Where's Elaine? Upstairs with Jewel. Child fainted when your wife oh. told her. Oh, she'd better now, but Elaine insisted on staying with her. Yes, she would. Well. Did you see the man of property? Yes, I saw him. And I saw his wife just for a moment. Oh, there. Hmm? These are mine. I didn't know... Yeah, I picked them up from time to time. Reasonable figure, too. You don't charge much oh. for your work. <laughs> I charge what I can get. I notice you haven't hung them anywhere. Well, no, I was... Uh, Hardly your style, eh? Well, frankly, my boy, I was... Wishy-washy? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Perhaps. perhaps a little too small? Well, I am a foresight. We like... A lot for our money. Yes, and that's a principle Soames carries too far. Much too far. What is it, Joe? Did he say anything? Yes, he told me to mind my own business. Oh. That's his privilege, I suppose. Yes. He wouldn't let me talk to Irene. But I saw her, just for an instant. She only half saw me. I think for a moment she believed she was seeing a miracle. Young Bassini had come back from the dead. 
Then she understood. My face went cold like a stone. And Soames slammed the door in my face. Well, that's his privilege too, I suppose. But still... Yes, but the thought of her shut up there with him after all that's happened, it's intolerable. Oh, poor little thing. One shouldn't condone immorality, I suppose, but... Now, I take it she was this young fellow's mistress. Yes, I'm certain oh, of it. It's a coil, isn't it? But, Joe, the older I get, the less ready I am to condemn the young for what they do. I can't help it. <laughs> young people ought to be happy if they can. They're young for too short a time. I agree with you, but I'm quite sure I'm the only foresight who would. I dare say. What, what will she do? Well, she won't stay with Soames, I'm certain of that. The question is, what will he do? Will he divorce her? Oh, he'll think twice. There's the scandal in his precious career. Now, lawyers don't like getting mixed up with the law, you know. Now, he'll hold on. She's his wife, and a wife's a man's property just as much as a carriage or a house. Now, he'll hold on as long as he can. Yes, he's a tenacious brute. Father, there's something I haven't told you, but I think perhaps you should know. You are the head of the family. Mm, much anyone thinks of that nowadays. What is it? After I left Sam's house, I bumped into Cousin George. Oh, that chap. Yes, apparently he was the last person to see Bassini alive. What? Yes, he found him wandering about in the fog. At first, Cousin George thought that uh, the buccaneer was drunk. He was weaving all over the place. Didn't seem to care what, what was happening to him. He was talking a lot, too, babbling, as George called it. But he heard enough to understand what the poor devil was going through. Apparently, Irene had just told him something which had driven him out of his mind. It appears the night before, Soames had decided to exercise his rights as a husband. Irene resisted, and Soames used force. That, that, that's barbarous. I, I refuse to believe it. George was positive, Father. I utterly revolting. Poor woman. Poor woman. Yes, and poor Bassini. But if it is true, it explains a lot. Why, why do you think it necessary to tell me, Joe? Well, it'll get about. You mean George will tell others? Well, he might. He's a malicious chap. He never could be doing this, Holmes. It's best that you should know, Father. A terrible thing. Terrible. Will you take some more brandy, Joe? Yes, you, you. you see George sometimes, don't you? At my club, you yes. Tell him to keep his mouth shut. This is not a thing to get about. If he tells just one more person, I... Hear my voice. All right, Father. All right. Come on. It was, it was both good. Oh, I... Sit down, sit down, sit down. Yes. I've had a shock. I, I won't deny it. All right. Yes. You see a house in a fashionable square. Trim, elegant, distinguished. And the family who live there equally so. Suddenly, you catch a glimpse of the reality behind the facade. And for a moment, just a moment, you're aware of violence, desperation, wild passion. It's a rum old world, Father. No wonder you're shocked. Answers may be, but uh, none of us eager to leave it, are we? No, I suppose Go not. on wanting things. With one foot in the grave, we'll want something, I shouldn't wonder. Joe, this business has helped me... To make up my mind, I'm too old oh, nonsense. for London, I mean. <laughs> oh, this noise and rushing about. Oh, I shall resign all my boards and sell this great barrack of a place. Huh? What then? Robin Hill. What? Bassini's place? Mm -hmm. Soames' house? I believe he'll sell. James thinks so. And I'll buy, if the price is right. But only on one condition. And what's that? That you come too. You and your wife and the children. Well, I should like it, of course, but I... Well, I can't answer for Elaine. Oh, I dare say we shall get on. What about June? Oh, well, after this, we may have to make other arrangements for June, but what about you? You agree? Well, I've put it to Elaine, of course. I think she must be glad for the children's sake, mm. but, well, you know how unpredictable she can be. Oh, she worries too much, and she's too thin, that's all. Well, Father, if Elaine agrees... I agree with all my heart. Good, good. Well, come and see me tomorrow when you've talked it over, eh?
Oh, dear, you must be very proud of little Francie. Oh, it's a charming waltz. What does she call this one? The, uh, the, the Kensington Coil, I believe. Oh, how appropriate. Yes, it does have a sweet dip to the melody. And is this one to be published, too? Of course it is. So she tells me. Roger, oh, don't pretend not to know. It's coming out next week. The same firm that published her songs for little people and Kiss Me Mother Ere I Die. You feel me, air tells me there's money in it. Money? What sort of money I'd like to know? Oh, quite a lot, Uncle. Enough to buy all her clothes. You don't tell me. Roger should put a stop to it, in my opinion. Good heavens, why? Music, poetry, a lot of time-wasting rubbish, if you ask me. All very well for a pack of foreigners, but uh, an English girl, who knows what company she'll be keeping. A lot of riffraff, I shouldn't wonder. Oh, Uncle Nicholas, that point of view is quite out of date. Girls do all sorts of things nowadays. <laughs> they always did, what? <laughs> they always did. <laughs> but she's a clever little thing. Well turned out. Damn if I don't take her for a drive one of these days. Did you see the critique in the latest genteel guide? No. No? Oh, Winifred cut it out for me. One moment. <laughs> My dear, that was very nice. Thank you, Aunt Julie. Well done, Francie. I wish I had your talent. Now, do you think it will sell? Smith and Latchmore think so. I made them raise my royalties for it. Raise your royalties? If you don't, I said, I shall take my immortal works elsewhere. That's right. <laughs> Somehow, Roger, I can't help regretting that Francie doesn't compose classical music. She did. Once? Really? A violin sonata, she called it, or some such nonsense. Didn't sell 30 copies. Ah, here it is. Now, uh, listen, everybody. Uh, we have pleasure in noticing the latest of Miss Francie Forsythe's spirited ditties, entitled Grandma's Poetry. <laughs> it is both sparkling and pathetic, and we ourselves were moved to tears and laughter. Miss Forsythe should go far. There. <laughs> Don't go too far, dear. <laughs> Talking of going far, they tell me Soames has given up his London house. Uh, yes, Aunt, he... Uh... Down to live in Brighton, I hear. Ah, it's a very good property in Brighton. It's a growing place, they tell me, though, why it should be, I don't know. Well, I believe the sea breeze is a very beneficial. Has anybody seen anything of that? Uh, Soames uh, travels up daily to the office. He finds the walk to the station. I've seen her. Uh, oh, dear, in the morning. Irene. Well, that's who you meant, wasn't it? Yes, dear, of course. Yes. I saw her at a concert by herself, looking beautiful and sad. Mm. You know, I've always rather liked her. If you ask me, I think Soames should... Um, Soames well, should do what, mm, Nicholas? Get her back, is that what you mean? She'd never go back. After, what is it, four years? Four years of freedom, I know I wouldn't. You shouldn't know anything at all about such things. Oh, don't be so stuffy, Father. We oh. nowadays know everything. What I want to know is, if Irene does go back to Soames, where will they live? There's no question of that. Because Jolene's gone and bought Soames' house, hasn't he? Uh, yes, but Aunt, that's old history. Who oh, is it? And Joe living there and that immoral German girl. His wife, Aunt. Oh, I dare say. But Timothy thinks it's all quite irregular. And June there and those children, well... It's a very it's... decent little house. I've seen it. Very pretty little cellar. A gentleman's house. That's what James said. A gentleman's house. And whatever we may say about Mr. Bossini... I would prefer it if he were not mentioned. He must have been a very clever young man to build a house like that. Oh, I, I do wish I could have seen it.
Don't let that dog touch your frock. He's got wet paws. Give boy. I don't mind. What's his name? Balthazar. Don't ask me why. They've all gone to Spain. I'm alone. Would you care to, to come up to the house? Thank you, Uncle Jolyon. I should like to. Good. Good. I dare say it's not quite as you remember it. My son's a painter, you know. He's got a, a French taste in things. Not mine, but there, the place will belong to him when I'm gone. It's elegant. You'll stay to dinner. It's a lonely business, eating all by yourself. You said they were all away. In Spain. Joe had always wanted to paint there, and Helene needed a holiday. She worries, you know, and she's not been well. June decided to go with them, so all I have left is little Holly. Isn't there a grandson? Oh, yes, jolly. He's a fine little chap. He's at school. First year at Harrow. Ah, mademoiselle, how is she? Very well now, I think. Good, good. I believe she sleeps now. Holly's been upset. Too many strawberries, eh, mademoiselle? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> May I introduce mademoiselle Bose, Holly's governess. Mademoiselle, this is uh, my niece. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Mrs. Heron. Enchanté, madame. Now, mademoiselle, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Heron is uh, dining with me. Will you take her up to Miss June's room and see she has hot water and so on? Certainly, sir. Dinner is in half an hour. A sharp change. Please come with me, madame. Thank you. Ah, Plunkett, I forgot to say, I have a lady to dinner with me. Tell Cook to do something extra. Very good, sir. Uh, and Plunkett, one more thing. Go down to the cellar. Turn right inside the door. First bin on your right, you'll find 14 bottles of hock. Bring me up one of those, Plunkett, but handle it like a baby, will you? That's a Steinberg cabinet. I bought it, oh, 35 years ago. I doubt there's four dozen bottles left in England. Chill it now, it'll be just right for dinner time. Thank you. We'll take a coffee in the drawing room. Very good, sir. Glass of port? I'd rather just finish this, if I may. It's a superb wine. Mm. I wouldn't give it to everybody. Uh, can't you? <laughs> Tell me, where are you living now? Chelsea. Mm -hmm. I have a little flat there. You're, you're alone? Quite alone. What do you do all day? Teach music. I have another interest, too. Work is nothing like it, is there? I don't do any now. I'm getting on, you know. What's the other interest? Trying to help women who've come to grief. To grief? Lord, I see. What can you do for them? Not much. I've no money to spare, but I belong to a society. Well, just a few of us. We, we do what we can. How do you... I mean, how do you find them? Through the hospitals. Hospitals. It's a sad, terrible business. What hurts chiefly is that once they were all children. <laughs> Pretty children, too, most of them. I don't know how you... I can't bear to think oh, about it. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned No, it. no. These things do exist alongside our comfortable world. My comfortable world. Good to be reminded of them from time to time. Shall we go into the drawing room? Perhaps you'll play to me. I should like to. I'll join you in a moment when I've found a cigar.
Is there anything you'd especially like to hear? Mozart? Mendelssohn? More Chopin. It's an evening for Chopin, don't you think? Indeed I do. Nocturnes? Preludes? Yes. But come and have a coffee and some cognac to go with it. Oh, no cognac, thank you, and no coffee. But I'll pour some for you. Thank you. Uh, without cream, yes. Does uh, this annoy you? On the contrary. <laughs> the curious thing, strong cigars and Wagner's music seem to go together, and I never could abide either. <laughs> now, as I get older, Beethoven, Mozart, of course. Handel, yes, Schubert. But above all, Chopin. That seems strange to you. Sentimental? No. He was not sentimental. He loved beauty. Look at you and listen to Chopin. More than a man deserves. I... I've said something to upset you. There, yeah. yeah, my love. Come again. Come to lunch. You'll meet Holly. She's a dear little thing. <laughs> that dog has taken a fancy to you. <laughs> the carriage is waiting, sir. Thank you. He'll uh, get you back to town in an hour or so. Here, this is for your protégés. Pounds. Oh, how kind you are. No, rubbish. Say no more. Very well. But thank you. I'll go and put my hat on. Two, les, trois, un. Jean et Jeanette. Vacances en France. Point. Il prend le train à Londres.
Plunkett. Yes, sir. Tell Beacon to have the Lando at the door at ten tomorrow. I'm going up to London. Tell me, what would you, would you pay for a place like this? Forty pounds a year. You don't think that's too much, do no, you? No, no, no. It's reasonable enough, I dare say. Oh, do sit down. Thank you. I, d I did enjoy our drive. And that splendid yeah. tea at Raffles. <laughs> it was like being a child again. Taken out for a treat in the holidays. We must do it again. Uncle Julian. Has June forgiven me? She doesn't speak about it, but... I should think so. Why have, not? Have you? I? Yes. Just as soon as I knew how the land lay. I regret nothing. I couldn't. When you were young, did you ever love very deeply? Ah. Love's a strange thing. Sometimes a fatal thing. Uh, the old Greeks knew that. <laughs> That's why they made love a goddess. I dare say they were right. Philip adored them, the way they gave themselves to art. He did, too. He had something of the, the sculptor in him, I fancy. Yes. Yes, he loved good line, balance, symmetry, the golden age of design and architecture. Do you know, he once said that he felt you belonged to it. What? That he said you had a real sense of beauty. <laughs> Devil he did. Well, so I have, and I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Strange enough that I'm here, that I'm alive at all. That night... That night, my son saw you for a moment. Was that your son? Yes. I thought for a second it was Philip. Early in the morning, I, I went down to the river. I didn't care whether I lived or died, but I was thinking of death. A woman saw me hesitating. She caught me by the arm. One of those women. She told me her story and I was ashamed. When you know what other people suffer, you're ashamed. She took care of me for three days. I had no money and no hope. She never left me until I was able to face the thought of living. And that's why you... That's why I, I do what I can for them now. No money. I wish you'd come to me. Why didn't you? Because my name is Foresight? Or was it June that kept you away? Well, no matter. From now on, you must come to me for anything you need. If you don't, I shall be quite cut up. Thank you. I manage very well. Mm. Now, you're coming to lunch on Sunday. Don't forget. Thank you. I won't. You mustn't come down if you find it dull. Dull? It's heavenly. Well, it's a pleasure to see you. Little Holly's face is the only one here I care to look at, except yours. And that's not humbug. I never told a woman I admired her when I didn't. Except my wife in the old days. When Holly marries, I shan't be here to see it. I don't like to think of her being hurt. A dog will scratch. Does Soames ever trouble you? No, I haven't seen him. Oh, that's a comfort. Shall we take a turn around the garden? I, I might find you a nectarine. I should like that. Good. Molly. Balthazar, come on.
Blanche to dance on Sundays. The little tailors never behaved so. The tailors were such well-bred children. The end of... My fault, mademoiselle. Well, better the day, better the deed. Go on, chicken, have your tea. We have shocked, mademoiselle. She's a thin, rum little soul. As for the tailor... <laughs> a little priggish. Holly hates him. The tailor are constantly held up as an example. It was a dreadful feeling of inferiority. And in Mademoiselle's next place, she'll frighten her pupils with the virtues of the little Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> I dare say, I dare say. But, but Holly's musical, I think. You haven't heard her play. Will you give me an opinion? Of course I will. You wouldn't like to, to teach her, would you? I should like to very much, but... What about you? And they'll be coming home soon. What does that matter? She may have forgiven me, as you said, but she'd never forget. Nonsense. You must forget. Because you say so, Uncle Jolien. She's a foresight, too. Yes. We are a stubborn lot. Mm. Oh, it's so hard to refuse you when you've been so kind to me. Then you'll come. Twice a week, ah. until your family returns. Then we'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad. That's not at all bad. Joe? Coming. Did it go well? Yes, my love. I think I've captured it. Tell me, how are you? Are you feeling any better? How's that migraine? Oh, much better, much, much better. But, but tell me, what have you captured? Simplicity. I don't understand. Well, I'll try and explain. Now, when you first, first start to paint in watercolours, you take a small brush, like this, and you wet it and fill it with colour. Now, let's say chrome yellow. By all means, Joe. Chrome yellow it is. <laughs> <laughs> then you lay the brush gently on the paper, you move it ever so slightly, and you lift it. And what have you got? Let me imagine. I think what you have is the first petal of a flower. Right. A daisy, perhaps? A yellow oh, daisy. Oh, I love you. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Oh, yes, Joe. I can see the first petal of a daisy. Something you can't improve upon. No matter how much you fiddle with tones, shadows, half-lights, all you're doing, however clever and subtle you think you are, is getting further and further away from your first clear vision of a daisy. And this you have learned here, in Spain? No, I think I've always known it. But the trouble is we're so bound by the conventional, what other painters have done before us. Oh, very well, of course, but the academics and teachers lay down as rules what should only be guidelines. But here, in this Spanish light, where the colours are harsh and the shadow is solid... You see clearly. Yes, I think so. For the first time in my life. And will you wish to stay here? Oh, of course not. If it's real. This way of looking at things, and it must be just as real in England as it is out here. Anyway, I have to find out. I'm glad, Joe. I pine a little for England. Mm. We shall go home next week. Letters for us all. Ah. A batch for you, Father. Thank you. One for me, from Grandpapa, and one for you, Elaine. Are you better? Mm. Oh, yes, thank you, yes. Oh, this is from Holly. <laughs> You're sweet. She's so sweet. Listen, Joe. Balthasar always comes when we pick strawberries, but he won't eat any. He thinks we're rabbiting and gets very cross, like Mademoiselle. She is being very tiresome, but she doesn't mean it. <laughs> Balthasar and Grandpapa send their love. I've got a new music teacher. Huh? She is beautiful and isn't a bit cross and gives me pieces to play, not these stupid scales. All the time. Oh, oh, all the time. <laughs> she and Grandpapa go to concerts sometimes and she plays me the music they've heard. She's not our real aunt, Grandpapa says. Real aunt? But I'm allowed to call her Aunt Irene. 
Irene. Well? Mm, very fine. This chap, uh, Massonet, oh, he's no Mozart, but... Confess, uh, Uncle Jolyon, you like it. Very well, I like it. It's extremely important, Uncle Jolyon, for your continued enjoyment of music, that you entertain a totally novel idea. Oh, what's that? The notion, subversive though it may seem, that since Beethoven and Mozart, there have been other composers of merit. You're making fun of me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you should feel like doing so. Irene, I've been wanting to say this to you. Don't get wrapped up in the past. Mustn't waste life. Too little of it. When you get to be an old chap like me, you know what you've missed. Because you've been cautious all your days. Too cautious to take what life offers. I have accepted it. You know I've accepted it. Yes, you have. But you're still young. Go on accepting it. Of all the Forsytes I've met, you are the most unpredictable. Hmm. <laughs> Not met my son, have you? Mm. Don't know my boy, Joe. I've had our differences, but looking back, I have to admit that he's been right. <laughs> yes, on the whole, he's been right. I put off telling you this. I, I won't deny it. They're coming back. Next Monday. June 2. Yes, but this must make no difference. Holly must still have her lessons. You will still come down. Uncle Jolyon. Dear Uncle Jolyon, you know it's impossible. There can be no more lessons. No more, no more operas. No more visits to Robin Hill. Excuse me, sir. Uh, a telegram, sir. The uh, boy's waiting for an answer. Telegram? No answer. Blanket. Ah, Mrs. Heron is coming to lunch. Tell Cook, will you? Yes, sir. Bal, 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 Come, boy. Come, the meter. Come here. Your letter received will be with you 12.30 this morning. Love, Irene. Come on, go right back. Come on, boy. Come on. Hey. To my granddaughter, June Forsythe, 
50,000 pounds in trust, the income to be hers entirely free of legacy duty, and if she marries to be held in trust for her heirs, and so on and so forth. And to my beloved niece, Irene Forsyth, born Irene Heron, by which name she is now known, I leave the sum of 15,000 pounds. 